Let's go over how to parameterize or configure the ADC on the STM32F. And this is the outline of this video. We're going over introduction, how to configure the ADC, and then, then the examples that you'll be doing on your STM. The ADC, it's a maximum 12-bit ADC. You can parameterize to be 12, 10, 8, or 6-bit, but the maximum resolution is 12-bit. It's using the successive approximation register technique. Up to 19 multiplex channels, which 16 of those are GPIO and 3 internal, one for a, sensor, a temperature sensor and two for battery monitoring. And then you can uh, apply different modes for your conversion. You can have single mode, continuous mode, scan mode and discontinuous mode. We're going to focus on these first two, single mode and continuous mode. And the result can be stored in little or big ending format. So you can shift the data in the register according to your needs. This is the generic block diagram. So you have the ADC in the middle and you have the 16 GPIOs plus those three internal signals that they connect to a multiplexer. So if you are using just one channel, one GPIO, you have the full bandwidth for your ADC. But if you are using more than one, then you need to be careful because you are losing bandwidth because you need to switch between channels. The ADC can be controlled using timers and the ADC puts the values out into a register that they can be accessed on your data bus. And you can also parameterize the NVIC so you can have interrupt routines associated with the ADC. So if you go to page 389 of your data sheet, this is how it looks, the block diagram that you just saw. You have the GPIOs over here, the temperature sensor and the battery. Then you have the multiplexer, enters and feeds the ADC. You have the timers over here to parameterize the ADC to go autonomous. You have some registers and the NVIC and the data bus. So go to the to page 389 and you can see this uh, picture with more detail but pretty much all this is represented inside of the block diagram let's go over the basic configuration of the adc so if i go and if you turn on your autolink and you create a project we go under our device driver library and we open the adc and this is how you use the driver you enable the adc interface so we're going to use this function here so it's connected to the APB2 bus and then we're going to enable the clock for the pins that we want to use with the ADC whatever uh, uh, pin port we are going to use A, B, C or D and then we parameterize those ADC pins to be in analog mode then we need to configure the ADC prescaler initialize everything and we can activate the ADC by applying the ADC command Another thing that we need to do is to actually do these channels. So we pick the pin, but then we need to use this regular channel config to tell which channel are we uh, redirecting our pin uh, on our multiplexer. All right, examples. The pooling method. Pooling method, uh, we're going to set up our ADC in single mode. Our int main looks like this. There are no interrupt routines associated with your code. You're going to parameterize the ADC and then you are responsible to do the starting of the conversion, acquiring the data, show the data, and then you repeat this loop. Easy. And uh, if you don't have anything else going on in your microprocessor, that's probably the easiest way to have the ADC running. This is inside of the ADC config. What you have is you have the structures uh, to parameterize the GPIO and the ADC. You enable the clock for port B because that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use port B, PB1 on channel 9 <clears throat> and I'm setting up in analog uh, pin number 1, no pull up and then I enable the clock for the ADC which is under APB2 and I parameterize the ADC so I put in single mode so I disable the continuous mode. The data line I'm shifting everything to the right disable the external tree configuration number of conversions just one the resolution 12 bits and i pass that to the structure and i enable my adc and then i do this last step where i say like pin number one is attached to channel number nine if we go over our main code 
So we just saw what's on, what was inside of this ADC config. Then we go while one and I'm just putting here a function, but I could have this code inside of this in, over here instead of a function, but we start our conversion. So we say software start conversion on ADC one, and then we wait here until the conversion is done. Once it's done, I'm returning the value of that conversion, returns the value, kind of formatting to a string, and I'm also converting uh, to a voltage. So careful with the sprintf, uh, it's a, it can be a heavy um, function to use, so just be aware that when you use this type of functions to convert things to string in, in, in a microprocessor or in this type of uh, programming can be a little bit, um, uh, can consume a lot of time, so careful with that. Let's go over the interrupt method. The interrupt method works the following. We have our main, we parameterize the ADC, we start the conversion just the first time, and then we stay on the while loop showing the data. Whenever the interrupt routine happens on your ADC, I acquire the data, but in this case, the next start conversion is done automatically by ADC. So I'm using the ADC in continuous mode. The way that I have for the main and the ADC to communicate is using a volatile variable, in this case the ADC value, so they can change information between both of them. So let's see the code really quick. Um, it doesn't change much on your ADC. It's pretty much the same code that you saw previously. The only difference is now that I'm setting up the continuous mode to enable instead of disable. The minute that I do this, the start conversion is done automatically. And then I'm setting up the NVIC so I can have the ADC working with interrupts. I point to the right interrupt routine uh, handler and I set up the priorities to zero, zero, and I enable the channel command, and that's it for configuring the ADC. And then inside of my main, so we just saw inside of this ADC config, then I start the conversion the first time, and then I'm waiting here for showing data. And inside of your ADC, what's going to do is, is going to acquire the data, send it to the ADC, to that volatile, comes out, and again, the ADC is responsible to start the conversion again. Let's see the last method, the timer method. So the timer, what it's going to do, we're going back to single mode, but now we are responsible for the sampling rate. We have a timer that is going to work at the sampling rate that we want to acquire the data. So we parameterize the ADC, we configure the timer, and the while one shows the data. The ADC still works with an interrupt routine. The communication between these is still done with a volatile uh, variable, but now I have my timer setting up the start of the conversion. So if I look at the code, configuring the ADC is pretty much the same code. The only difference is that I go back and I disable the continuous mode, so it's in single mode. Timer, you are familiar with parameterizing the timer. You can change here the, the sampling or the sampling rate or the timing, refreshing time of your timer. In this case, sampling rate is set to 100 milliseconds, which if I do the inverse, 10 hertz. Nyquist tell, tells you that you should be sampling it at least twice. So my maximum frequency that I can put on my channel is 5 Hz. But we can change these. It's a matter of just changing these variables so I can have um, the desired sampling rate. Inside of my main, I'm initializing the GPIOs, configuring the timer and the ADC config, what you just saw. And then here I just show the data inside of my ADC. Nothing changes. I'm acquiring the data, sending to the ADC, and the volatile is the way that they have for these two variables to, to update properly. Inside of my timer, I start the conversion whenever the timer expires, goes here, starts the conversion, and everything should work fine. So on Canvas, I'm providing the code of these three methods. You should uh, either try for yourself first and then look at the solutions, or uh, if you feel over overwhelmed, just upload the code and play around with some parameters and see how it works.